We want to honor God because He sees everything. You were born with a plan and a purpose. He's the God of all things possible. He's the God of all miracles. Grace Grace with Nina Michelle. I'm Michelle Humphreys. And I am Nina Keegan. Welcome to our broadcast today. Today we are going to be talking about what to do or if you're one of those people, and I, I'm preaching to myself here, if you've been one of these people who are always seem to be waiting for the other shoe to drop, like you just can't seem to think that you, you can be blessed or you know, our uh, uh, blessings are available to you. It feels like you're always just anticipating something's gonna go wrong. And because of that, it steals your peace. And so today we're gonna get to the bottom of that because I need this sermon too, because this seems to be, you know, something that has kind of been a thing for me. Well, so. I think in the time that we're living in, you know, we kind of get PTSD from different things that happen. And so I think it's so important to talk about this message and what does God's word say about this? So we're gonna talk today about stop waiting for the other shoe to drop. And so we're- L Let me just tell you, <laughs> I, Recently, my husband and I lived in Houston, but moved to the suburbs, the suburb area. And we bought this house, and it seemed like at the time there were all of these, any house that we were looking at, there were so many competing bids, and, and the realtors, it was just a complete seller's market. They were like, get all your bids in right now. They're gonna make a decision by five o'clock. You barely had a moment to look at this place. And then they would you know, run these inspectors ragged and they would go through it. And so we wind up with a house and it was really like, it wasn't our favorite house. We more or less liked where it was and there was just nothing ever for sale in that area. So we wound up with this house and it's, it, it was, it's about, I guess, 15 or 18 years old and it's and it's got, it just had some updating issues. It just had some things wrong with it. But when we got in there, we knew we were gonna have to remodel but it's like every time you turned around, my contractor was telling me about the broken thing of the day. And we're not talking simple things. We're talking huge things. Everything that you could possibly think of that could happen to that house happened. And as Michelle would tell you, I was like every day, it's like if my contractor called me, we weren't in the house while they were fixing it, I was like, we, it was like the, sho the other shoe was gonna drop. Like, what now? Please don't tell me. Well, and even after you did some of the renovations, yeah. then like the water heater burst or, you yeah, know. Yeah, there was stuff that was going were wrong bursting. everywhere. And then like the first time it rained, it looked like that movie, a river runs through it, like going <laughs> through our yard. And like there was stuff wrong with the pool and the AC. And then even when I'm getting the house painted, AC units that were already fixed and replaced now were pouring into the new painted ceilings and floors. I mean, it was just like, and I was so discouraged. And so I was like, Lord, what's happening? And it just, I was so like, like beside myself about this to the point where I could hardly pray. I was just so discouraged and it was just so expensive. And, like, and well, did, did yeah. I miss God? Was you I know, sometimes whenever will. things like that happen, you feel like, well, did I miss God? And then you don't have confidence to right. pray. Yes, but I had to go back and I had to speak instead of declaring the problems. I started speaking God's word and saying, you said when you bless us, you add no sorrow to it, that this is going to be a place of peace and joy, that God, you are causing all things to work together for good. And you know, I had to remember and stop and say, no, 
I, I put the hedge of protection around this house. I send your angels, Lord God, to just surround this house and, and, and to, to cause everything that would be the devil trying to bring destruction to my house and to try to steal from us because it was stealing a lot of finances. You know, that he, we have to remember instead of like worrying and expressing all of this, we have to go to what the word says and we have to start speaking and taking our authority over the devil, over a spirit of destruction, over everything that was happening. And it's still, it's like, I, I still am almost like when I have to like switch the AC on from the heat, it's like, like, I have to be amazed that it's all working. It's like, but instead I go, thank you, Lord. I thank you for this house. I thank you that it's going to work. It's all going to work together. And this is how we have to be. We cannot immediately, because all we're doing is causing us to have another trip around the mountain and causing us to get into an agreement with the devil when we are waiting for the other shoe to drop instead of knowing what God said and what God is going to do about it. Right. And and I think when whenever we part of the testing of our faith is that we have to be confident in our position in Jesus. You know, if you haven't ever asked Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we're going to give you an opportunity to do that today. But he wants to hear all of your prayers. I, I remember uh, when I was growing up, I knew a lady and I would tell her that I was praying about something that she considered minor. And she said, girl, God's too busy for that. That's and, how I grew up too, yes. And I said, God's not too busy for that. He made the whole world. He's not too busy for that. You know, the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and petition and thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Yes. And, and it, so... He wants you to bring him those things, yes. even the things that seem so little, whether it's a house repair, which believe me, they're not little, they, they get to be expensive and, and, and that can really wreck a budget. And so, uh, or, or a health issue, or maybe it's an issue with your children, or maybe you've had trauma as a child. And as a result of not having that covering that you needed as a child, now as an adult and an adult Christian or not, you are still thinking that at any moment, all of that turmoil is going to happen again. And, you know, God says, just rely on him, trust him, and he is going to see you through it. No matter what happens and no matter what the situation looks like, you don't need, the Bible says, have no fear of bad news. So, what does that say? Yes. We don't, we, even if our contractor is calling our house, right? That's the or whole a doctor right. is calling our house, which happened in my case this morning. You know, um, I've had an eye issue. And so, you know, the doctor's like, oh, you need to come back. Yeah. And so when things like that happen, it causes our heart to drop. And, you know, God you knows. Get, you feel that feeling. But yeah. that scripture you just mentioned, I have the whole thing here so you can look it up for yourself and, you know, Print it out, read it off every day, personalize it. Psalm 112, 6 through 9. For we will not be shaken, we will not be moved. We do not have fear of bad news. We are confident, we trust in the Lord. He resolves us with confidence and in our confidence is made firm. Isn't that awesome? And we will not succumb to fear before we look in triumph. At, the, at our enemies. See, we can triumph over our enemies and we will not be in fear. And we are gonna talk more about that when we come right back. You are watching Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle. The world needs to be reached with the message of Jesus. And that is the mission of Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle, to see people's lives change with the saving power of Jesus Christ. When you donate to Grace Grace Ministries, you're also reaching orphans and the underprivileged throughout the world, as well as the United States. The Bible says that when we help the least, the forgotten, and the overlooked, we have done something for Jesus himself. Will you be a part of what God is doing to help those in need and those who are hungering to hear the real message of Jesus? Give today by logging on to ninaandmichelle.com or text the word GIVE to 325-603-3354. 
You can also send in a check to 6315 B FM 1488 Road, number 122, Magnolia, Texas 77354. Grace Grace Ministries is a 501c3 charitable organization. Gifts are tax deductible, so join us in the Great Commission today. Give now. Welcome back to Grace Grace with Nina Emisha. We are talking about if you are always waiting for the other shoe to drop, we're gonna just really get to the bottom of this so we can overcome this issue. And we're talking to ourselves here <laughs> because it's a <laughs> tough one. And she said, you should talk more about your eye issue. Uh, about six weeks ago, I went on a trip and I usually have these protocols when I go on a trip and I was in an airport restroom and I washed my hands and. I, my eye was itchy and I just reached up and rubbed it. And I thought to myself, you're gonna regret that. And guess what? You regret it. I regret <laughs> it because I got some kind you of infection. You anticipating the shoe to drop. <laughs> yes. So, yes, and so I have for like six weeks just been on drops and having to see a doctor every week. And it, t it turned into this like terrible eye infection and so you know we just have to trust it, it, it you know and there are articles in the news you know talking about you know certain eye drops have caused people to go blind don't you always see those things when you google and like all of these shoe dropping thoughts right so what I've had to do is calm myself and say the blood of Jesus is bigger than any eye infection. I am not gonna go blind. I'm believing God, I'm trusting God. I'm not gonna wait for the other shoe to drop. I'm gonna trust God and I'm gonna walk by faith and not by sight, no pun intended. <laughs> That's true. You know, it is, it's It's really all trauma-based. Yeah. It really kind of is, is maybe patterns that you've gotten into like uh, through other things, other tough things that you've gone through. And it's almost like that flight or fight response. Like you almost like get into that, like you'll a quick, you, you know, when you see like your doctor's number pop up or you're seeing something and you're just like, oh, what's this going to be? And you, you anticipate because you've been used to trauma in some ways. And, but you know, the devil tries to wear out the saints and he wants us so run ragged with worry and with fear and anxiety over the what ifs. And we have no control over the what ifs, but God knows everything. And God does not want us to fear. He doesn't want us to be worried. He wants us to have peace that surpasses all understanding. And you know, when you rest in the Lord, rest is a weapon that the enemy hates you know you know even you know Jesus had to get away and rest like even think about even in the middle of the storm in the boat when the tumultuous waves and the storm he was asleep he you know he, he, even he even Jesus when he was on the earth had to rest and also, Jesus said he couldn't do one thing about anything unless his father from heaven allowed him to or caused him to. And we have that same thing because not only that, but we also have the Holy Spirit in us because of what Jesus did. And so we don't, we can have that rest assurance always because if you stop and say, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, just show me, you know, and, and start rehearsing the word and not the problem. Just start praying over the situation. You know, I am blessed and cannot be cursed. This is, you know, I take my authority over anything that's operating in my house or in my body or whatever. You can take your authority and then after you pray, you rest and you ask for peace. You get your praise music on and you start coming after this thing with a vengeance because this is no more. And when, when the devil starts to realize you're not falling for it. He's going to leave you alone. Mm -hmm. You know, think yes. about like Jesus in the, in the desert. It says when the devil was tormenting him, it finally said, and then when he threw everything he could at Jesus and he didn't work, it says, then he left him alone. He left. And then the angels came and took care of him. Right. There, you're, the, there's an end to it when you don't believe it. And that is called resisting the devil. Yes. Because the devil wants you to think you're not going to get better. Your marriage is never going to get better. Your children are never going to be saved. You're never going to get out of the rut you are in financially. And the list goes on and on. And, you know, and he'll, the devil also uses people 
to come against you to drop those uh, bad news bombs, yes, right? Yes. Um, years ago, and Nina can tell you, I went through this thing with my esophagus and I could barely swallow. It was just terrible. It was just like for months where, where I could hardly get water down. And I remember going to church at church, you know, where you're supposed to get faith. You would cough, and yes, like I would cough and it was terrible. At night. And so um, this lady at church, she saw me and because I could barely eat, she's like, girl, you are wasting away. And um, <laughs> I, it, I, I was worried about myself already. I did not need her to say that. And so I said, no, I'm not. You know, I just kind of like snapped back, not in a polite way necessarily. I was just like not going to claim that. And she goes, yes, you are. And I said, no, I'm not. And I just believed that God was going to heal me. And no matter what I did, no matter how many doctors I saw, it was not working. I took medicine. I did all these things. And one night while I was asleep, the Lord healed me. And that is the truth. And this lady called me the next day and she goes, Michelle, how are you feeling? And I said, I feel great today. This is the first day I was able to really drink my coffee and it didn't bother me. And she said, um, she said, last night I got a word of knowledge and I claimed it for you that Amen. God was going to heal your esophagus. And he did while I was sleeping. And it has never given me that problem like that again. Thank the Lord. God is faithful. You have to look in the face of the enemy, look in the face of family and friends if you have to and say, no, this is what God's word says. No, this is not my permanent uh, situation here, right? And, it, rebuke it. Like yes. that's the thing. You're either going to pick it up or you're not, because we are either we're, we're going to you're going to pick up what the devil's lies are, and then you're going to be on that that roller coaster, that mountain, walking around it again and again because you believed that, or you're going to take your authority over those lies and you're going to you know in at the onset. Like at the onset, yes. right, like you did. And you have to stand up for yourself. You cannot receive a bad report from someone else saying how bad you look and all of those things. My youngest daughter still laughs about that to this day. She goes, Mama, you were like arguing with this lady at the front of the church. And but you know, it was what I needed to do that day. Well, because that's a good point because, you know, people can be like in church and yeah. think that, oh, that was a word for me in church and then think because of where you are. But, you know, think about the devil. He used to live in heaven. He knows the word. He's yes. got it all figured out. And he thinks he can come after you with churchology and church people and even the word when he's twisted it enough to fit like today's standards. But anyway, we're going to talk more about that when we come right back. You're watching Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle. The world needs to be reached with the message of Jesus. And that is the mission of Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle. To see people's lives change with the saving power of Jesus Christ. When you donate to Grace Grace Ministries, you're also reaching orphans and the underprivileged throughout the world, as well as the United States. The Bible says that when we help the least, the forgotten, and the overlooked, we have done something for Jesus himself. Will you be a part of what God is doing to help those in need and those who are hungering to hear the real message of Jesus? Give today by logging on to NinaAndMichelle.com or text the word GIVE to 325-603-3354. You can also send in a check to 6315B FM 1488 Road, number 122, Magnolia, Texas 77354. Grace Grace Ministries is a 501c3 charitable organization. Gifts are tax deductible, so join us in the Great Commission today. Give now. Welcome back to Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle. We're talking about waiting on the other shoe to drop, and we're not going to do that anymore. And here is a scripture in Isaiah 54, 13 and 14. It says, I will teach all your children and they will enjoy great peace and you will be secure in a land that is just and fair. Your enemies will stay far away from you and you will live in peace and terror will not come near you. And in some versions it says in harm, no harm shall ever come near you. And so when you know the word, that's why it's so important to know the word and know the word for yourself because 
even if things look so dire and so terrible and you are in a place where you might be thinking, oh, that was an eye issue or you had a broken air conditioner, but my problem is super terrible and super serious. Maybe it's you've gotten such a terrible doctor's report or you have a child that you just cannot see how he's ever going to get delivered or, 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 or to come back from where they are. This is so important that you get your hopes up because God is a miracle working God and he doesn't want you to go around this, this same old mountain of worry. You, no matter what you see, faith is not logical. You speak because God is not logical. The way he does things are not our ways. His ways are so much higher than our ways. So what seems impossible to your carnal mind, you know, you get into agreement with what God says because he, what can he not do? God starts at impossible. There is nothing too hard for him. And it, he can turn all things around in an instant. And you keep, keep, keep focusing on the word, keep speaking the word, keep declaring the victory. And don't pray about it. Don't get yourself all prayed up and pray about it. And then immediately someone asks you about it and go, well, I don't see how it's ever going to happen. Don't negate your prayers. Guard your mouth because that's the key out of the life, out of your tongue is blessings and cursing. Speak life or death. And you don't want to curse the very prayers you just prayed. Amen. That is something we all have to put a guard on our hearts and our mouths right. and speak the word, nothing but the word, no matter what, no matter what. And your miracle really is right under your nose. It's in your mouth. And, you know, the fruit of your life is in your mouth. So I cannot stress to you how important it is. And even like right now, in the day that we live in, if you look down at your phone and look at the news and look at the alerts and or if you watch the news, whatever, however you get information, you're gonna see one thing after the other, after the other. Talk about shoes dropping. You know, it's like, uh, you know, the Bible talks about that, that though the mountains be removed and be cast into the sea, that God's gonna keep you stable. Mm -hmm. Like no matter what, in, you live and move and have your being in Jesus. At the end of the day, whether the economy collapses, whether there's another plague, whether whatever, you fix your eyes on Jesus and he will take care of you. That is what you have to rest on right now. There has never been a time, I believe almost in history, where we needed to rely on Jesus more than we need to right now. We need to not worry about what the news is saying and we need to steep ourselves in the word. If, if we can ask you to do one thing that will change your entire life, it is have a daily time with the Lord. Seek the Lord for you, for your household. Seek the Lord to know what it says in his word. Get in there every day. Know that word. Ask God to write it on your heart. There has never been a time when it was more crucial to what is going on in the earth and and not being shaken by everything that you hear and by bad news. And and you have to take your emotions and your feelings out of it. Do you know that right. facts don't care about your feelings? It right. just doesn't. And facts and the truth, that's the same thing. God's word is truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. You need to pound that into your head. His word is truth. Every man is a liar. And even if you don't feel like anything's going to change, the truth is the truth, no matter what. And God said it, his word will not return void. His word is complete and whole, it's alive. And again, the facts, that, that it doesn't care about your feelings. Your feelings take it out of the equation because it's not logical. Truth of what the Lord said sometimes is so illogical. It doesn't make sense because God is a miracle working God. And again, we, we, we don't know the Red Sea moment that God has planned for you. 
But you're not going to see those moments if you keep declaring otherwise. You have to speak the word of God. You speak the truth. You speak the promise. And you never give up. And we are going to pray about that, Michelle. Amen. And you know what? We don't want you to live a life of anxiety. Jesus does not want you to live a life of anxiety. He says that the, that the chastisement of your peace was on his shoulders. Yes. So we believe in Jesus. We believe that he died on the cross and that, that God God raised him from the dead so that you might live and today can be that day for you. So let's just pray. If you have never asked Jesus into your heart, this is your opportunity right now to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. So pray right now, Lord Jesus, I, I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you wrote, that God raised you from the dead and I believe that you want me to ask you into my heart. And I ask you into my heart right now. And I ask you to be the Lord of my life. Change me forever. I am born again in your spirit right now. In Jesus' name. And Father, I pray for every person that is dealing with anxiety, fear, with health issues, with financial issues, with relationship issues, with people in their family that they know are not saved. We pray right now that they would be saved. In Jesus' name, filled with the Spirit, healed, blessed, and that God, that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing more than they can handle, even right now. In Jesus' name, we will not wait for the other shoes to drop in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. That was so good. And, you know, we just know that we know that we know that that what we are saying is the truth. And we have seen many miracles. We have witnessed things that, that are just, you know, uh, can't happen in the natural. And we know that God will do the same for you. He is no respecter of persons. So what do you need? You just pray it, you speak it, and you never give up. Amen. Well, we are so glad that you watched our broadcast today. We just know it's gonna bless you. And we just want you to, you know, if you want more, go find us on social media. We are all over. We wanna hear from you. We wanna hear your prayer requests. We are so happy to pray with you. Stay tuned. You are not going to want to miss this exciting message from our dear friend, Daryl Youngblood. We love you. God bless you. Does science disprove God? Is there a war between science and faith? We don't need God to create a universe. There's no evidence for God, and it's irrational. Is there no evidence for God? Am I delusional for my beliefs? It is delusional and stupid. Am I brainwashed? Do I ignore reason? Logic. Critical thinking. Science. RDOF uses logic and reasoning. RDOF has empowered my sons to defend their faith with facts. If you want to be equipped to defend against the biggest objections to the existence of God, RDOF is the place for you. Has science really ruled out God? Is faith at war with science? If you want to be equipped to respond to these claims and more, check out RDOF.org. The evidence he presents is so powerful and overwhelming. Incredibly compelling, yet easily understandable. We believe in rationality, we believe in reason, we believe in science, and we believe in the existence of God. I would leave every event with a mind-boggling awe and assurance. I never believed in God. I just think it was craziness. RDOF confirmed my faith. RDOF confirmed my uh, full belief, full faith in the Lord, man. The appearance of design in the universe is undeniable. The lights, the crowd, the videos. To book a presentation or watch our free videos, go to rdof.org or find us on Facebook at RDOF Events.